people asking to do a video on it. I mean, I was going to make it my first YouTube video to be honest, but at that time lockdown was on, couldn't really ride, so the only time I can ride my bike is when I've got shopping to do, errands to run, because UK all non-essential travel is not permitted. Not going to lie, it's times like this that I live, I wish I lived in America. I see it in quite a few states, you're still allowed to ride your bike, you're still allowed to travel, it's just uh, social distancing. Well, not with UK. UK, you're not allowed to do jack shit, which is a bit of an annoyance, but at the same time it's essential. But I uh, hope you enjoy the video, if you do, make sure to like and subscribe click that bell icon so that you get updates when I upload uh, new videos and let's go on with this review so guys again 2020 street bulb uh, just gonna do a walk around talk about some bits see the bike static so that that way uh, I can talk about some of the points when I'm doing the actual ride so uh, as my previous videos, if you haven't watched, uh, I'll put it up somewhere about here. So this is Twitch Twitch Street Bob. It's got a Milwaukee 107 engine. I have the Vance and Hines short shots in the other video also. You can hear what they sound like from different angles of the bike. So the bike itself, uh, it's 86 horsepower from the Milwaukee 8. Uh, great engine, really reliable. Air cooled but with uh, liquid cooled heads, which is really handy. It is uh, 110 foot pounds of torque with a 1 to 10 uh, compression ratio. So, really torquey bike, really good fun. Um, would say with that amount of torque and the size of the rear tyre, the re rear tyre is quite thin. Uh, so, with that, it does lose traction ever so slightly at points. What a lovely day! Yeah, it does lose traction every now and then. Uh, to be honest, that was when I first got it. Now that I've started riding it and I've got used to it, uh, it's not so bad. I came from uh, a CBR 600 to this, so the 600 has a lot of power but not too much torque. Whereas this is the polar opposite. Alright, what a friendly person. Uh, it is a fuel injected engine, not carbureted, which you would expect from a, a boo, an engine of this age. Uh, it has a two piston floating rear brake. Uh, I use the rear brake, well, just as much as you use the front, I guess, but it's pretty good. 
I, I think it does the job. Uh, and then on the front, you have a four piston fixed brake. Uh, obviously, a big difference between the front and the rear. But all in all, I, I quite like the braking on this bike. It's responsive, but not so responsive that you're gonna low side it or end up, I don't know, messing yourself up. Uh, six speed. Um, oh no, sorry. I will alliterate as well. It is single disc on both the brakes, as you can see. Six speed gearbox. Pretty handy for if you're going long distance and just want to do some cruising. Stick it in six, cruise along. Uh, so they say it gets 47 miles to the gallon. So this is a 3.5 gallon tank. A lot of people complained about that because they were like, hmm, is it, what's this bike meant to be? Is it the bottom end of like a Sportster, slightly bigger? Or is this trying to be sort of like a soft tail slim? Uh, not soft tail slim, low rider S or some of like that. To be honest, the tank, if I'm going on a long run and I'm riding conservatively, I've managed to get about 200 miles out of a tank, and that's uh, motorway speeds, well not motorway, but we don't really have any motorways up here, as you can see, it's in the middle of nowhere, but perfect for riding your bike. But uh, when I have ventured down south or uh, further out, motorway speeds, 60, 70, sticking to that, it's quite easy. Um, 200 miles to the tank, good range on the bike, absolutely dreamy. I also have the Sundowner Harley Davidson seat. Now, I am aware, and it will be put in the comments most likely, that this is a butt ugly seat for this bike. People that usually have this bike put a lapera or uh, a step up on it. They look a lot better, especially with the diamond stitching and the different colour uh, thread inlays, but I'm planning on taking this a decent distance, so Sundowner. Ugly as fuck, but on top of that, uh, probably the comfiest motorbike seat I have ever sat on. These bits just here, down the sides, really support your runner thighs, uh, good step, loads of cushion in it, I would highly recommend it. It is amazing. Uh, once the hardware for my sissy bar comes in, I will be doing a video on... We'll be doing a video on how to install the Sundowner seat as well as the sissy bar but I'm still waiting on that hardware to come in because of the coronavirus the deliveries in UK have really slowed down so uh, yeah when that comes in do a video on that uh, but talking points done uh, let's get to riding hope you enjoy Jesus this guy sure does love going slow we're doing 40 in a 60 but of course that's just my luck as soon as I decide to record a YouTube video out come the Sunday drivers. Fantastic. Finally passed it. And of course I've missed the overtake as my GoPro decided to stop recording. Uh, I apologise for the wind noise. This helmet is dreadful. Oh, that's the gravel. Uh, I will be buying a rear off at some point or there is a few really good uh, really good helmet companies. I've seen one on Instagram when I was plotting through. Uh, they sell a helmet called the Marauder. I mean, looks badass. If you're wanting a Harley with a full face helmet, uh, I would recommend that. It looks pretty cool. Well, lights are in my favour today. So as I said, bike, nimble, you can throw it around and it just absolutely loves it. Uh, torquey, very torquey. I would do an 0-60, but one, um, the engine hasn't been properly broken in, and two, because of coronavirus and all that, I don't want to do an 0-60, uh, risking the back of off the bike, put strain on the NHS, I'll look like an idiot because I'm doing something that I really didn't need to be doing. So just to save my reputation and not look like an ass, uh, I will do an Auto 60 in another video, but not this one. Uh, 
No, so I'm a big fan of the handlebars. Um, only problem is, I don't know how I feel about the wrinkled black. So, handlebars of their actual position, great, love them. Perfect uh, height, perfect length away from my arms, it's pretty good. I'm six foot, so obviously with the street bob having a really low uh, seat height, I can flat foot it. I mean, my girlfriend can flat foot it and she's like 5'3"-ish. So yeah, really low seat height. With the handlebars you can also pull them back quite a bit. Uh, tested that out not long ago. So if you were of the smaller variety and you were like, handlebars would be perfect at the height but I need pull back. They do pull back quite a bit. But also hardly sell the pullback uh, risers and bars, so there is that. Hmm, I am in need of the gasoline. So, let's talk about controls. Uh, so our standard, that is your grip setup levers. Uh, I have mid controls on mine, which, being six foot, they're kind of just in the middle of too far too far forward and no not too far forward sorry a little bit too far back but i've not actually tested out any forward controls yet but uh, i will be looking into that possibly because as you can see my leg could maybe extend to about there so that will be happening but for i'd say five seven to five nine uh, mid controls would be fine. They are quite comfy as well. Uh, I've just got the standard pegs on mine, but they'll be getting changed out at some point. I'm thinking of going uh, the brass collection from Harley Davidson. Right, let's talk about seat. So I've obviously got the Sundowner on my bike, but the Street Bob comes with a solo seat, slight step up at the back. Um, the seat itself ain't bad, I'll put a picture of it up on the screen. So yeah, the seat itself isn't bad, but obviously some people are going to want a passenger seat. Uh, they don't really... The one seat I do know that they do for passengers is that little square rock seat. I've heard nothing but complaints about it. Uh, I'll get the name for it. It's sort of like another separate seat that is tightened in to the back of the solo seat and then to the rearwards uh, attachment point. But I've heard nothing but bad things about that, so that is why in the end I opted in for the Sundowner. So I was like, I want a seat with a passenger seat, but I don't want to compromise comfort for... Uh, just carrying a passenger so what I'm basically saying is if you're if you're gonna be riding the bike yourself and you've not got a girlfriend or well, I don't really know if friends go in the back of bikes so that would look a bit weird but if you've got no one on the back of your bike or don't need anyone on there the stock seat is totally fine uh, it's comfy only for guys when you open it up a little you're uh, bum does slide back a wee bit uh, with it sliding back I've never actually had my ass come completely off the seat but again I didn't have it for long I had it for about oh god bumpy I had it for about six months and then traded in for a sundowner so yeah seat stock not too bad uh, ever so slightly just not ergonomical, if that's even a word. So, gearbox, let's talk about that. Uh, gears in this, super smooth. Oh look, it's a bit ocean. Yeah, I live uh, quite close to the, the coast. But yeah, so, gearbox, mega smooth. Not really any big jerks in it. Uh, super easy to rev match, I mean, well, 
I do know what you're doing anyway because shift levers in a good place. Uh, one thing I would say is if you are a smaller person, the shift lever is quite high up. Like if you're wearing trainers instead of boots or something like that, uh, I imagine you would have to lift your foot quite high to actually shift up. Shifting down, obviously, not a problem. Just gonna take you in a little route along here, show you where I be living. Because it's quite a nice view. Here we have it. This is the lovely location of Lossy Mouse. Really nice day for it as well. Unfortunately, because of the coronavirus, we can't go on the beach, so out of luck there. So, next up. Uh, accessories and types of things you can put in the bike. Now I know most Harley owners, or Harley enthusiasts if you want to call people that, uh, will know you can pretty much put anything on a Harley. But for those that aren't that way inclined, uh, so this bike, yes it's a street bob, it's meant to have the cut down bobber look, really minimalistic, but if you want you can still put sissy bars on it, it has hardware kits for it, backrests. Uh, with the stock exhausts, it's a 2 and 2 shotgun exhaust that runs the length of the bike. I obviously have the uh, short shot exhaust, so I don't have a problem. But what that means is if you buy any saddlebags for this bike from Harley-Davidson, uh, most of them stop halfway, so you won't be able to put big solid bags on this. However, with the short shots, once they're on, I have known of people that have got uh, bags from Road Kings, uh, fucking CVO Road Glides, things like that. Uh, done a little bit of fabrication work themselves and stuck them on. Because that big exhaust isn't right under the bags, you can have a full size bag on your bike. But yeah, again, I don't know like, a lot of people that buy this bike buy it for how minimalistic it is and how much of a bobber it looks. So, for me I bought it because price-wise this was the most sensible bike to buy. And it has a decent sized engine and the weight of it is quite uh, a bit less than the bigger bikes. So, you've got a decent engine. No, oh, it's the first. Decent engine, lighter bike, so get more go-go juice. Right, well we're coming up to the Lossy Strait, so I'm only going to go from 30 to 70, but you're going to have a look at it I guess. Accelerates fast, very torquey. God, I wish I had a different helmet. Uh, to anyone that's thinking of buying a motorcycle helmet off of Amazon, do not go for the V Can VCAM because as soon as you get up to a decent speed, all you can hear is wind noise. That is most unpleasant. Right, so. Next order of business, uh, tyres. So the tyres on this bike are quite a bit thinner than uh, your larger Harley Davidson's. I have heard you can put larger wheels on it and you can actually put a larger tyre on the rims that are already fitted to this bike. But they did say with doing that uh, it can potentially void your warranty. I'm not 100% sure on that so don't quote me. But I have heard it can void your warranty as it's a tyre that is not specifically made for that size of rim. 
but uh, I do know people that have done it and so far I've had no problems. Uh, but again, you can also buy larger tyres. Uh, there's aftermarket swing arms if you're wanting a big back tyre, but I mean on a bobber, I don't know how good that would look. Jesus, everybody's out today. No. Got another bike coming up. What's this guy who on? I just got denied a wave by a moped rider. And you try be a nice guy. Jesus. Well, I'm going to go fill up in some of the gasolines. I'll see you all in a minute in a minute. And just so that is correct, our petrol stations have fighter jets. cleaning his car yeah so that garage is the buccaneer I was gonna fill up on petrol but this idiot forgot his wallet and uh, they randomly have a fighter jet outside the garage because the jet's called the buccaneer their garage is called the buccaneer so for some reason the RAF decided to give them a jet or at least that's how I think it went down they might have bought it, I'm not sure bit of a strange one so yeah, overall uh, with the bike I would highly recommend the bike if you're doing uh, if you're going city riding absolutely perfect bike if you're going just out and rides with your mates short distance, that's great uh, if you're going on long, big, like, cross-county trips, I would maybe go for something a bit bigger. Maybe like the Lowrider S or maybe a Road King. But for me, this bike was, uh, this bike was only £12,000. And to me, that was the most viable financial option. I didn't want a Sportster because it was a bit too small for me. You can pick a Sportster up for about eight grand six grand if it's used but uh, then I tried this bigger than a sportster comfier uh, I'm not bagging sportsters in any way shape or form they're great bikes uh, I'm just a little more inclined to get a bigger bike so yeah I would highly recommend I'd give it maybe I mean if I was being really generous a 7.5 but I think I'd probably give it a 6.57 because while it is a really good city riding bike uh, there are better bikes out there I, I'm well aware of that at some point I'm looking at maybe getting a CVO yeah I hope you enjoyed the video I'm away to go get my wallet fill up in some petrols and then potentially go bar some bike anyway He's out.